Today, I both get to talk about one of the most mocked and ridiculed movies of all time and share a pretty cool charity opportunity with you guys. So before we get into the roasting of the movie, I'm here to share something called Team Trees with you guys, which was started by Mr. Beast and has now been joined by hundreds, if not thousands of creators around the YouTube space. The whole idea started when he hit 20 million subscribers and people said, hey, you should plant 20 million trees for the 20 million subscribers that you have on your channel. And after a full day of planting and realizing that that would have taken forever and might not have been the best strategy. So they ended up partnering with the Arbor Day Foundation, which is the largest nonprofit foundation for planting trees in order to make this deal happen. So they managed to work out a system where for $1, they will plant one tree. That means if you even only have $1 to donate, that is still one tree being planted out in the world. So essentially what he's asking for is $20 million. They're trying to raise $20 million. And you know what? That crazy boy just might be able to do it. Now, obviously, if you guys don't have any money and you can plant trees somehow, that's a great thing to do. But the great thing about the Arbor Day Foundation is that they not only just plant trees, but they also plant trees in the areas that need them the most. They're involved in rainforest conservation, replanting forests that have been clear cut, and working with towns, government agencies, nature parks to strategically place trees where they will make the most impact. And that's just a great thing to get on board with and it would be a really cool way to end out this decade is to be able to say, hey, look, there's a bunch of crap on YouTube, but look at the positivity that can happen when you bring people together. So if you guys are interested in taking part in this and able to donate anything at all, I'll have the information linked down below. I'll have links to the Arbor Day Foundation so you can look into them yourself and see if it's something that you feel comfortable donating to. And like I said, even $1 makes a difference. $1 will literally plant trees. I'll be making a donation myself. I'll be sharing it on my stream. And if for some reason you guys can't donate, that's totally okay. Maybe just feel free to share this video or consider sharing the video, share the initiative, share anybody else's videos. You're probably going to be seeing a lot of different YouTubers talking about this over the course of the next two months because it's a massive undertaking, but there are so many big people involved in this. So I, I really think, I really think it's possible. Now, Team Trees knows that planting 20 million trees is not going to solve all the problems in the world. It's not going to solve global warming, but it at least makes an impact. It makes a difference. It's such an easy thing to do that can make such a major difference. And you know what contributing to planting 20 million trees can help prevent pissing off the trees so that they don't make you kill yourself. And that's how we segue into this movie review. So The Happening is the acclaimed, not critically, but acclaimed movie by M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan, uh, that, uh, you know, by that point, people were already kind of done with his shtick. You know, by that point, he was done with the glory days of The Sixth Sense. Signs was really the last thing that people really took to. I didn't hate the village, but everybody else seemed to. And then before the happening was like woman in the lady in the water. That, yeah. So things were already looking grim for our man M. Night. And what could have been a really interesting movie just fell completely short. It's not bad enough to be funny. It's not tense enough to be scary. And it's not thrilling enough to be a thriller. I've read time and time again that he actively tried to make it a B movie, but there's just nothing about it that comes across as a B movie other than it being bad. So if you guys have not been blessed by the happening, we're, we're going over the plot, we're doing it. There are so many memes around this movie, some of my favorite memes, in fact. So the whole thing starts in a windy day in Central Park. You know, not the best weather, not the worst weather, but then the screaming starts and everyone suddenly starts walking backwards or stands completely still, immobile. Now the walking backwards thing, I don't quite get because they don't always do it. It's weird to me. There's really no consistency there. Some people just continue walking forward. Pe some people do completely different things. It doesn't really make sense to me, but whatever. That's what happens. People just start walking backwards like it's that goddamn Coldplay video. So while this is happening, we're getting a narration from a girl who's very confused and the, her friend next to her ultimately ends up stabbing herself in the neck with a knitting needle that is conveniently located in her hair, which is just a great start to this delightful First time R-rated outing for Shyamalan. Then it immediately cuts to a construction site where people start dropping off the building, which again is honestly terrifying. Most of the things that happen in this movie would be terrifying if it wasn't just wrapped around all of this horrendous dialogue, horrible direction, and just overall crap. And then the little guy says, you have a girlfriend named Wendy too? Well, I saw your thing and it said W-Y. 
The big guy says, no, man. Mine says, welcome to Jamaica. Have a nice day. <laughs> Excuse me, what? And then we get to Marky Mark, who is a science teacher, and he's mostly just really excited that he didn't have to play a cop or a crook for once in his life, and... This is what they did to him. Look, I don't know if you guys have heard about this article in the New York Times about honeybees vanishing. Oh God, no, please not the bees. And then we get the first of our ongoing themes is having a healthy respect for the laws of nature and just nature in general. Because again, this is not your twisty twisty Shyamalan movie. The twist is there the entire time. It's not even a twist. It's hidden in plain sight. It's quite obvious. So the teachers end up getting told what's happening in New York and he finds it very odd that it started in Central Park because at this point they're calling it a terrorist attack. So they start evacuating the school and everybody goes home and oh my god it's actually an origin story for Attack on Titan. I digress. So before they leave it just hovers over this attributed quote. This quote that's attributed to Albert Einstein that says if the bee disappears off the face of the earth man would only have four years left to live. There's a lot of bee talk in this movie for a movie that spoiler alert has nothing to actually do with bees. So before he leaves, his friend, one of the math teachers is like, yo, we're going over to this different location. You can bring Alma, Alma's his wife. And then Marky Mark says, you know, man, if, if she's acting weird, just don't, don't focus on it. Don't bring it up, you know, it's just a thing. And he's like, oh my God, no. I saw her crying at your wedding, man. It's all coming to fruition. She's gonna leave you. But anyways, he gets home and this is actually the only movie that Zoe, Zoe Deschanel, can't quirk her way into our hearts in. She's just bad, like everyone else. She's trying to ignore these phone calls from this guy named Joey in a very quirky way, which again, ain't working this time, sister. Because amidst all the horror of people just killing themselves in brutal ways, Lil Alma here is a cheater. Kind of, I guess. It, it was apparently just tiramisu. We'll get there. For unknown reason, it really hovers over this part of an article where it says like, Philadelphia murder rates soaring. I don't know if that's just a pride to point out that humanity is being bad to each other. Either way, it, they really focus on that. So they end up packing up and leaving, getting to the train station. The friend obviously ends up being weird by saying, Okay, good. Why don't I'm really we glad you chose to come. So now she's mad and goes to sit on a different area of the train when she finally picks up the phone for Joey. And we get this amazing just set of dialogue. You've got to stop calling me. You're acting like the fatal attraction guy here. We ate tiramisu together. That is it. I told you it was just Captain Crunch. Who approved this dialogue? At every step of the way in this movie, the dialogue is so bad and it doesn't come across as a way it is it would in a B movie, which was allegedly his intention, it just comes across as bad and awkward. And then the train abruptly stops in a nice little town called Filbert. And I bet Filbert was really happy for their only opportunity to be featured in a film to such great caliber. I bet it was a real point of pride. I bet they have a sign up saying the happening was filmed here. I don't care how much this thing gets ripped apart. I'd have a sign. So obviously people start panicking. No one really knows what's happening. They assume it's terrorists. The reason why they had to stop was because the train conductors lost contact with everybody, literally everybody at all stations. They couldn't get a handle on anyone. One, so they had to stop. Everybody crowds into this diner and then you end up seeing this video that's getting passed around of a zoo handler just walking into a lion cage and feeding himself to a lion as he very comically starts having his arms ripped off. Like if you just stand there and a lion bites your arm, it's just gonna be able to like rip it while you're standing up. It's honestly a level of green screen that puts Neil Breen to shame. So at this point, everybody panics, realizes we need to leave. We need to leave. We need to get further away from these cities because it's pushing into the cities. We just need to go in the opposite direction where it's apparently not happening. And it's at this point that sadly, the friend, the math teacher, the one with the daughter, the one who's had the kid there the entire time decides he has to go try to find his wife who got separated from them because she was shopping, couldn't make it to them. So he can't get a hold of her at all. So he decides he's, he's got to go try to find her. So he leaves, leaves his child with Marky Mark and... Quirky Deschanel. He was the only one that could see that the Alma was a fat whore. Okay, again, maybe not a cheating hoe. It was just tiramisu, guys. It was just tiramisu. So everybody ends up driving away and leaving, but luckily this one nice couple end up saying, yeah, we'll we'll take you guys with us. We just need to start stop back at our plant nursery and grab some supplies, and then we'll go. And they actually immediately have the theory that it's probably the plants being angry and and releasing toxins into the air. Marky Mark being a science teacher realizes that's possible but they think they're crazy. Which I don't blame them because there's just this extreme focus on the hot dogs. We're packing hot dogs for the road. You know hot dogs get a bad rap. They got a cool shape. They 
Got protein? You like hot dogs, right? Like, man, it's an emergency situation. I don't think anybody's that concerned about what food options you bring as long as they have food options. So again, after the aside about the plants, they again, dude! You like hot dogs, don't you? Forget about the hot dogs! So then it cuts back to our good friend, the math teacher, and they end up driving through a bunch of bodies hanging. And again, this is like horrific imagery. This movie could have been really good. There's so many good blueprints to this movie. He just ruined it. And then obviously he dies because he broke the cardinal rule of not leaving the group. You don't leave the group. And then again, Alma's supposed to be the one taking charge of taking care of Jessica, the kid. But then like this happens. Don't cause a panic, okay, Jess can hear you. It's bodies, isn't it? I know what be bodies. It's not cute anymore, Zoe. There's children here. And now this is my time I just want to take an aside. Why did no one look for gas masks? Why is there no one in this movie with any kind of like self-ventilation system? Why is there not even one mask at all? You've established that it's an airborne toxin. Why wasn't the first thing people did go to like Home Hardware, Home Depot, whatever you have in the United States and start buying out gas masks and any kind of like melt protection. Even in the worst post-apocalyptic movies, people get some of these basic supplies to protect themselves from whatever might be out there. And you guys know that this is an airborne toxin and not one person has a mask or a gas mask or anything. Why? And then people start dying again and Marky Mark is thinking, wow, maybe it's the, the, the number of people in these groups were pissing off the plants, were pissing off the grass pissing off everything. There was this guy, Joey, went out and we had dessert. I went out and I had dessert with him when I told you I worked late. And I'm feeling really guilty in case we're gonna die. Just wanted you to know that. Again, this isn't cute. You're literally holding a child's hand. So then they kind of realize that, okay, if there's a toxin going out there and there's wind blustering, the wind is obviously pushing this towards people. And we get this amazing moment. Everybody's kind of like hounding Marky Marks, like you're the science teacher, man, get the answers. We need to go stop people from killing themselves. So that's like the first dumb thing. Like you realize that there's something in the air making people kill themselves and you want to walk towards them to try to stop themselves from doing it when that toxin is probably still in the air. Oh, you dumb dumb. But it's okay, because we get like one of my absolute favorite lines in the movie. I'd be scientific, douchebag. Easily could have fit into Breaking Bad. So they realize they have to stay ahead of the wind, even though the wind keeps kind of going over them, but because their group is small enough, it's good wind, it's safe wind, it's okay. But uh, this group's not so lucky. <laughs> not fast enough, loser. So they end up in a model home subdivision, and we get this just amazing moment of Marky Mark talking to a plant. Just going to talk in a very positive manner giving off good vibes. We're just here to use the bathroom. Then we're just gonna leave. I hope that's okay. Bow to your plant, overlords! But it's a plastic plant. I'm talking to a plastic plant. You know, it's, it's little things like that that just really make, it really make the movie so good in ways, but it's, it's just so goddamn awful. It feels kind of similar to that. With the bees disappearing, I mean, I don't know. It feels like a pattern. Bees! So they end up leaving the model home because they realize that it's so close to the road that people are just gonna start flooding that way and they've established that the more people are around, the more it triggers the plants. But as Marky Mark is leaving, he realizes that a huge group of people are coming. Instead of running away, realizing, oh man, they're gonna set off the toxins, he just likes to stand and watch the death fest, you know? It's just totally logical. It's all good, everything works out. So as they're running away, you get this nice, just great shot of the advertisements for the model homes and above it, it says, you deserve this. Just a nice reminder to the audience that all of this kind of stuff is happening because we are, we don't care about the environment. We do horrible things to the environment. And if you piss off the trees, the trees will make you kill yourself. So they end up coming across another house and they're like, you know, this kid has not eaten all day. She's hungry. She's an eight year old. We need to try to find her some food. So they try to get into the house. And even though they've now established that it's because they've pissed off the trees and the plants that this is happening, but they just let her swing on this swing. And it's a very tense moment of swinging uh, while they're trying to kind of get in this house. And they realize people are inside and they're very scared of the toxins, obviously. So Marky Mark's method of trying to convince them that they're sane and healthy people is by singing. On black water, keep on rolling, Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining? Because I always find that when you're trying to prove to other people that you're not going crazy, singing is 100% the way to do it. And the rednecks in the home are like, you're not bringing those toxins in. And then the response to not bringing the toxins in is to open the door and their windows have cracks in them and then shoot outside them and like let obvious oxygen 
get in. So yeah, the American education system is just terrifying to me. So they run from the house and it starts cutting over to like different news articles and news stories that we're seeing where they're saying that there's a chance that, oh, there are the gas masks. Good job, old ladies. It was actually a chemical released by the US government because they were testing something similar to counteract chemical warfare. But we know the truth, guys. It's the plants. But then after this, they finally get to my absolute favorite moment and favorite aspect of their journey. The what no lady. Why you eyeing my lemon drink? So either way, this very weird lady ends up inviting them in and cooking for them. I hope the meal was sufficient. I wasn't expecting guests. No one says anything and it's just really awkward. No commenting on the meal, no saying, oh no ma'am, this was lovely, thank you so much. Like, I get it, she's kind of weird. She's clearly some hermit lady, but she still invited you into your, her home. She doesn't realize that any of this weird stuff's happening because she doesn't have a radio or television or anything, but still. But it's before bed, Marky Mark and Quirky are just kind of having their little conversation together and they're whispering and then they hear creaking. And then of course, this creepy old lady's chilling in the hallway and we get just the most iconic moment in cinema history. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. And of course, after making such a claim like that, you'd think she'd kick them out or something. She just walks away, just walks away and goes to sleep because why deal with conflict? I, I don't know. Anyways, Marky Mark wakes up in the morning. Everybody's gone. He thinks he's, you know, he's just going to check on this old lady. And then there's this creepy, weird living doll thing that we never actually get an explanation for. It's like, was this your child that died at a young age and you put a weird mask on it? Cause those eyes look pretty weird, but this is clearly not a living person. And then again, she freaks out and is like, you're trying to steal from me and then insists that he leaves immediately. But then instead of like chasing him out or walking him up to get his own things, she just again walks away and then just goes in the garden. So Marky Mark ends up walking after her because she goes out into her garden. And he's like, like, listen, hear me out. I'm a teacher. Just hear me out. See, I'm a teacher. Just. <laughs> if this was a book, would it win the Pulitzer? I think so. Look what you did, dickhead. You got the old lady killed. So at this point, Alma and Jessica are in this old separate attachment to the house. And this is where it gets like real dumb. So they're having these conversations. They're getting really close together. They know that if they go outside, it's going to kill them. And then, you know, Marky Mark is like, I don't care if this, if we're gonna die, we're gonna die together. Like as of right now, you guys are safe. As of right now, things are okay. It hasn't swarmed you yet. You can just try and wait it out a little bit longer. But no, this, Dumb mother walks his stupid ass out of this house. Oh, and then great job, Alma, bringing the kid out so she has to find a creative way to off herself. Like, what is wrong with these people? You were fine. They just happened to luck out that the whole thing ended at that exact moment so that they didn't get hit by it. Like, they literally miss it by like three minutes. Either way, the whole thing's over. It cuts ahead and we get just more great dialogue just before Jessica starts going back to school. Yes, Aunt Alma. I love you. Look, I don't expect excellence from my child actors, but I expect something. But at the same time, I realize that most of the problems originate from the script. Nobody in this movie was good. Not a damn person delivered any lines properly. So I can't blame anyone except for Shyamalan. And then we get one of my favorite tropes in one of these things when people are struggling, babies. Remember kids, if you're ever having a problem in life and your relationships aren't going well, have a baby, it fixes everything. That was sarcasm, I know there's some wild people out there that believe that, so that was sarcasm. And then it kind of cuts to the news where they're talking and like one guy's like, no, it was, it was definitely the plants, like the plants are sending a message, we're not being good enough to them. And you get one of those stupid ass news reporters saying like, I'd be inclined to believe you if it had happened in at least one other place. Why did it only happen here? Oh. Baby, we love that foreshadowing. So yeah, the whole movie ends up ending where it's happening again in France. So we've, we're just under the understanding that at periodic times, at any given moment around the world for less than 24 hours or like exactly 24 hours, the plants are just gonna try to murder you. And that's why we all need to band together and help plant 
20 million trees and just keep planting trees and keep the trees happy. And that's how we do this full circle. So again, if you guys are interested in donating any money to that cause, uh, it's all listed down below. Let me know what you guys think of The Happening. Have you seen The Happening? Do you like it? I still maintain that The Happening has a really good rubric of ideas, some great imagery. It just has the worst execution of anything I can think of in, in recent memories. This is definitely a, the definition of a movie that I'd be fine to see remade, but just with better writing, a better cast, better director, all that good stuff. So yeah, that is going to do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I will catch you all later.